Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to share with you the brand new sheet load of cards for January 2020, show you the first set of cards I made and let you know how you can download the file for free if you're a subscriber. I hope you'll stick around and get all the details. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you would like to have access to the sheet load of cards printable, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here and I'm so glad that I'm still here in 2020. If you're new to sheet load of cards, I'll tell you a little bit about it quickly. And then I'm going to share with you the supplies I use for my first sheet load of cards for December, 2020 and show you what I've created. So each month I try each month, I come and I share a printable with you that gives you a new card sketch, supply lists and dimensions, and then cutting guides, usually to make anywhere between eight to 12 cards. When I find a layout I like, I like to use it and use my paper in the wisest way to get the most bang for my buck. So that is kind of the thought here behind sheet load of cards. You can use these just to build up your own card stash. You can use these to give away as gifts. And I've also had a lot of subscribers say they use these in card ministries or they give them to local senior living centers to be passed out to the residents. For January 2020, you can see the card sketch here. Guys, it is really simple this month. It's just two pieces of pattern paper total to make these 12 cards. And I think with this layout, you can jazz it up as much or as little as you would like. This month to get the 12 cards, you'll need two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper. You'll need three eight and a half by 11 solid card stocks, and you'll use three different colors or maybe some of those you'll leave the same but they each get cut a different way. For your card bases, you will also need another six pieces of solid card stock. And I usually just use white or an off-white for those. And you'll just cut those in half and fold them in the half to get your card bases. Like I've already said, this month we yield 12 cards. Now, if you like this layout, but you don't need 12 cards, I always give the dimensions here of each one of the pieces so you can just make one. The next thing I always do is try to give you some alternatives or other ways to use this sketch. For instance, this month you can always adjust the size of your image or sentiment focal point pieces to fit your image or your sentiment. Feel free to change the shape of this. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. You can make it a circle, a square, a fancy shape, whatever you want. This month, I will be using a border punch to get this little scalloped piece here, but you don't have to use a border punch. You can always use, if you have decorative scissors, pull those out of your closet where they might have been in hiding for a while. Some of you might have border dies. I'll go ahead and show you here a few different options. So years ago, when border punches were all the rage, I bought tons of them and I still own a lot of them. My favorite is probably this Stampin' Up one. It's just a simple scallop and it's what I use on this month's first set. But they also come in different shapes and you can still find these in stores today. But maybe even if you hit up a crafty garage sale or like a local Goodwill or other thrift store, you might be able to find some because a lot of people probably got rid of these. Here are some examples of border dies you could use. You always have the ones that just cut the end of the card. And I got out this rickrack one because it's not really a border die because it would cut a piece of rickrack. But I think if you have something similar and you put your piece of paper in here correct, you could use this end as that specialty design from the sketch. And then I pulled out some different ones that you could make borders from as well. I say whatever you have at home, make it work for you. And last but not least, from about 1990, I got out some of my decorative scissors. 
I don't know how many times in the past I have almost given these away or gotten rid of them, but let me tell you, they might be in a box in a closet where it's hard to get to, but when I need decorative scissors, I know I still have some. So you can always use those too if you have them. Now another option is, if you don't have any of these tools, you don't have to have a fancy edge there. You could just leave the edge straight and adjust how far you want it to peek out behind piece B. That's also an option. Let me know below if you can think of another tool or idea for that decorative edge because that might help out another viewer. Another way to make an alternative for this card, you could rotate or flip the sketch. So you could rotate it so it's horizontal or maybe you'd rather have your sentiment on the left. Go for it, make it yours. And another idea I thought of instead of having to have like a border punch or decorative scissors, instead of having this piece of cardstock, you could just maybe take, you know, half inch ribbon and put it around there and cover up where these two pieces meet. That would work as well. The second page in the file is the cutting guides. So I tell you how to cut each piece of paper or cardstock so you can start putting these together. Tomorrow I will be back and sharing the process with you, but one thing I wanna share with you today is, if you're gonna go ahead and try to make some of these, when you cut piece B and piece CS1, you'll want to adhere CS1 behind piece B before it goes on the card. Because this is, I had you cut these at one inch tall and then do your decorative edge. Well, they're gonna show up a lot taller than what peaks out. So make sure you do that ahead of time. Don't adhere down both of the pattern papers to the card front and then try to do the border strip. Just like the last few months, you are gonna cut your pattern paper pieces exactly the same way, and then you'll mix and match these pieces on the final card. So for instance, if you use pattern papers that look like these, some of your cards would have the floral on the top with the bigger piece A, and the rest of them might have the floral on the bottom for the piece B. And another way to get even more differentiation between the cards so they don't all look the same is to use double-sided papers and then mix and match those as well. You know, sometimes use the front, sometimes use the back. I did forget to mention earlier that at the end of this video, I will tell you how you can download this file for free if you're a subscriber of mine. So make sure if you're not already subscribed and you want to download this file that you go ahead and click on that button. But before we get to that, I'm gonna share with you the supplies that I used for the January cards, and then I wanna share with you the cards that I made. Now there are other products that I use to put the cards together, and I do mention those in the process video that I will be sharing tomorrow, but the basic supplies I use is my Stampin' Up! Scallop Border Punch for that decorative edge. For my card socks, which I needed three of, I use two grays and a white. The two grays are for CS1 and CS3, and then the white one is where I stamp my sentiment, and that was for CS2. For my card bases, I use just heavyweight white cardstock that I buy at Hobby Lobby. I cut these in half and folded them in half for top fold card bases. And then finally, for my pattern paper, I use the My Mind's Eye Splendor Paper and Accessories Kit, and I got this at Tuesday morning. It has lots of fun double-sided papers, and it was only $2.99. And I chose these two papers here, and as you'll notice, they do have that other side that I can mix and match those. Let's go ahead and see the cards I made. Now that you've seen the cards I've made this month, let me tell you how you can get your hands on this file for free as long as you're a subscriber to my channel. Now, just like in past months, we're gonna go on the honor system here. If you do go download the file, please make sure that you're a subscriber to my channel. You will find the link to the file all the way in the bottom of my description box below. 
you can download it, print it, just view it online, whatever you want to do. If you have any questions on anything I've said today or any questions on sheet load of cards, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you're gonna share cards with me this month, whether it is via Instagram or YouTube, make sure to use the hashtag, hashtag S-U-Y-S-J-A-N 2020. I will also have linked below the show us your sheet load new guidelines if you would like to use a blog post or send a card to me in the mail. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.